So I'm going to be reacting to the wizard Liz, a motivational YouTuber who makes videos to inspire you to become the best version of yourself. The video I'm going to be reacting to is titled how to be extremely seductive. So I'm going to share with you a man's perspective on whether or not we actually think this is seductive. So I heard that you are trying to get into your seductive era. I okay. heard that you are trying to get into your femme fatale era. Kind of sort of. Whatever it's easy for you because you look good, blah, blah. There's a lot of good looking people and they're not charming or they're not like seductive. You just look at seductiveness overall is not just about having the biggest dump truck or the biggest yiddies. If you go to a party, do you think you can tell simply by watching the way someone walks and maneuvers around a party if they're confident or not? That should tell you that there's more to the things you can sense and feel of a person other than just their physical character traits. Authenticity. This is probably one of the most important things of all the things that I'm going to mention here. You have to be your authentic self. You might notice like people that are famous or people that are getting like a lot of things. You look at them and you're like, why are they getting it? They look so regular, like nothing is really special about themselves. It's because they are themselves and unapologetically themselves. They're not afraid to be vulnerable or if they don't want to be vulnerable because that's just not them, they won't be. Okay, well, not all celebrities are being their authentic selves, but I get the point that she's trying to make. Being your authentic self is what's going to give you the most confidence. And one of the most important things in terms of your energy and your confidence, when people look at you and they think you're attractive, before they can ever think you're attractive, they have to see that you think you're attractive. You think you're the it girl. You think you're that girl that's walking around in the ish. Because if you don't even believe that, how do you expect me as a man to believe that? So authenticity actually is really important, especially for you as a woman. It's part of the reason why on my shows, I always tell you guys, don't wear a red blazer just because someone told you to wear a red blazer don't wear red lipstick and do your hair in a pixie cut just because someone else told you that that's what the really high value status men are attracted to because at the end of the day if you put all of that on and you don't feel comfortable in that you're gonna feel like this whole look and this whole thing that you put on is like a costume and on top of that you're gonna be looking for men to validate you to tell you whether your look works or whether you actually look good you're not trying to be someone else you're just yourself and you love who you are it's such like guys another level of confidence to just be your authentic self do not try to embody like oh my god this is how i have to be heartless because this is what works or this is how i have to no you can have your boundaries you can have whatever but if you're a nice girl be that nice girl don't try to be like mean or whatever because you think that works it like for example, me, right? I have a more tough personality. For a lot of people, they're not attracted to that. That's not what they want. But a lot of people are. But then you have like girls that are very kind and very sweet, very, very feminine. They will attract other type of people than I will. Guys all have different types. I'm going to tell you this as a guy. Guys all have different types and things that they like and things that they into. You know when you're in high school and you got the, you got the jocks here, uh, bully, ah, basketball, football, meathead, ah, big strong man. And then you got the goth kids, you know, they got their skater stuff. Those same factions and groups and niches, they grow up to all be adults. So the men that meet you, uh, they all like different things. Don't ever be stuck on the idea that all men only like one thing. Now, of course, there's an overall like beauty standard that is aesthetically pleasing to most men. But don't ever think to yourself, oh, my aesthetic is a little bit more feminine or my aesthetic is a little bit more tomboy. Maybe guys aren't going to like me. Trust me, there's guys into a lot of different stuff. Putting effort in your looks. Honey, listen, why do you look? Yeah, like you've never showered before. Damn. Huh? So you know what I really, I what I really think nice. is also bad? I feel like there's a lot of women that only put effort in their looks once they're going to go somewhere. So for example, uh, only when they have like a date, like once a month, let's say, they will just make themselves pretty for that date and that's it. No, honey, like you should make yourself pretty for yourself. You should groom yourself if that's what you want for yourself. You have to put effort in your looks, not for someone, but for you. Find a nice hairstyle that suits you better or find like a makeup style that suits you better or your style a little bit, you know? It is is a form of self-respect to have a clean space around you. And I know sometimes you're depressed, you're not willing to do it, whatever. It's okay to ask for help from a friend. It's okay to ask for help for whoever. And if you don't 
really have money, just washing yourself a little bit or whatever, doing the smallest <laughs> thing. I don't know why the way she said, just wash yourself a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. If you don't like that, you don't like to be super clean, just scrub a little bit. No, I think what she's also trying to say is, if I'm correct, when you go out into the world, like you want to on a regular basis, be able to look you in the mirror and feel like you like you. So whatever that consists of, do that for you consistently, uh, because like I said before, men are receiving that from you. And it if it's not authentic to you, if when you look in the mirror, you don't actually feel like that girl because you don't invest in yourself like that girl, then when you walk around, you're not going to be walking around with that aura and that confidence and that energy of that girl. The guys, believe it or not, they can receive that. And you know what they do to the girls who don't have that it girl energy or don't seem to believe in themselves, very insecure. They say... Oh, time for me to rub my hands like bird, man, because now I can take advantage of her. She's so insecure. You know what she's going to need heaping, heaping loads of? My validation. A seductive person knows when to walk away. I am so firm on this right now. Like I have realized in my life, you really have to benefit because I am, am so tired and I've even fallen back into these people pleasing tendencies and giving so much more than I'm receiving and at the end I am left depleted and I feel like why did I do that again because now I feel bad listen I will walk away from anyone I don't care who you are right now even if I have to walk away let's say from my own mother to protect my peace I yeah. will do that I'm so tired of putting myself in compromising situations for other people. I'm so tired for giving more than I'm receiving. People that are very seductive and that have a lot of self-respect, they walk away because they love themselves more than another person. So what she's saying is actually going to sound really selfish, but ironically, guys do love you the most and appreciate you the most when they recognize that you have the level of self-respect that you don't feel like you need them. I know it sounds very weird because you're like, wait, are you telling me that guys literally want me the most when I don't want them or don't need them? Precisely. And so uh, uh, weirdly and oddly enough, when people see that you have self-respect and you're not willing to deal with very much, yes, of course, you're going to lose out on some men who we, I call microwave men just looking to do the absolute bare minimum and, you know, get the most out of you. But at the end of the day, uh, the people that end up in your life will be prepared to like do the hard things to be in your life, meaning like put in work and consistency, especially the guys that you date. And that's what you want at the end of the day, because you don't want a lazy man in your life that literally just wants to do the bare minimum because you'll always be fighting against that. So you don't love yourself. You don't respect yourself. That's why staying with toxic people around you, toxic friends, toxic relationships, a toxic boss and whatever, and just staying. And I like how she says toxic, 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 toxic. She says it like, like really like the T is very emphasized. I like that. You don't chase, you attract. Listen, does anyone like someone that is desperate? No. no. Okay. <laughs> you, nobody likes it. Imagine you're going to like a job interview and like uh, the boss like, okay, we'll call you later. But then you call them like 10 times every day. Like, please, please. Did you hire me? Please, whatever. Man, no one will hire you, okay? You're desperate. Or like, uh, for example, there's a boy that you want. You keep messaging him, but he's not showing that interest in you. No one wants you. You're desperate. Imagine like a guy that you really don't want. He's like a nice guy, but he keeps stalking you. Why do you not want them? Because they're desperate. What does desperation show? That you're not good enough. That you're not confident. That nobody else wants you. And that's why you, you feel like, oh my God, like I need to cling on to this person. And what does this person think? They think like, ew, no one wants them. Why would I want them? Why would I take the leftovers? Someone that is confident doesn't have to. There's an acronym that I actually like to talk about to help you strategize how to be seductive and also how to present yourself the way that you want to present yourself as a woman to be attractive to men, of course. It's called Laura. So it's uh, L is for listen, O is for observe, R is for receive, and then A is for analyze. So those are the most important things that I think you should be focusing on if you want to be the most attractive version of yourself to men. Simply because when you're doing that, uh, you're the deepest in your feminine and you're gathering information, which is so beautiful and so amazing because then you don't have to worry about getting played when you're gathering good, accurate, truthful information on the guys that you're dating. Um, 
but definitely when you're uh, thinking about receiving from men instead of thinking about, oh, uh, 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 I desperately need to be with you and I desperately have to have you. And that's that's part of the problem, right? When you meet a guy and you think, oh, this guy's really cute. Oh, I like the way he's treating me. I like th the way things are going. You get so heavily invested that, okay, now I'm committed to this. We went on two dates and I like both of the dates, but now this has to work. We have to be in a relationship or else it's not it's not then you start pushing and as you push more those guys that you're with start uh pulling away and taking steps back then you push more they pull away more until finally you're right in their face and you're begging them please please let me understand that no one can compete with you listen if you're a truly confident and seductive person who's on your level who's on your level maybe people are on your level maybe they're even better we don't see them why would I look at other people? You know what I think about all day when I go to bed, when I wake up, everything? Me! Liz. Oh. Everything, literally. I'm yeah. the main character. I think I'm the most best thing in the world. And I don't care who thinks the same about themselves. I hope people think like that about themselves. But I don't think about them. I think about me. I do not care whatever someone has. I hope they get more. The point she's making here is actually really important because when you're into you and your focus is on you, it becomes a lot easier to not be so thrown off by what other people are doing. Uh, see, because one of the issues is if I'm a guy and I'm pursuing you. So for many different reasons, guys can become aloof and then, you know, they don't message you for some days. They don't talk to you for some days. But then what happens is, see, when you're not just into you, you start overthinking. Oh, my God, what is he thinking? What does he want? Why is he not messaging me? Is something wrong with me? Did my breast smell? Did I eat my food the wrong way? Maybe if I didn't stuff my face like a pig, then I wouldn't that he would have liked me. Maybe if I wore a red dress instead of a blue dress. So then you're constantly thinking, oh, my God, he needs me to act different. He needs me to change i should adjust myself i should have been more what he wanted and more what he liked no 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 no. you should have been more of you because at the end of the day you're not trying to attract uh someone who is attracted to this uh, robot clown outfit that you can put on and make yourself become someone else you want to attract the person that's attracted to you just being you because you know what's the magic in that is that when someone is attracted to you just being you they'll come up to you and say oh you're so unique. You're so special. Like you're so much different than all the other people. And the funny thing is you won't have to put in any effort to maintain that because it's just you being you. Stop giving away your power by putting all of this good affirmations, all these compliments, all these things into other people and then neglecting yourself for it. When you look in the mirror, you can't even say, oh, you're beautiful. But when you see someone else, oh, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in the world. Honey, how do you talk about yourself? You don't do that to yourself. Why do, would you do that for others? Talk to yourself first. Okay, uh, uh, it's gonna get me fired up. Uh, the point she's making here is very accurate and I actually want you to take heed into this. You always need to be focusing on how to put your energy in the right places, okay? Because especially when you're dating guys, you wanna be making sure that you're not, you're, 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 your mind and your focus is not in all these other places that distract you from putting energy back into yourself, okay? Uh, even when you're dating men, whether you date one man at a time or you like to date a thousand men at a time and have a roster of 80 million, you need to be making sure that there is proper investment in you because if you're distracted, your focus and your energy will be on chasing around men or chasing around what they want or chasing around what they like. And you'll be constantly, you'll be like a chameleon. You'll be changing yourself each and every day to try to fit the mold of what he wants only. And you'll be on the floor. You'll be on the floor in your maid outfit, scrubbing the, the, the pots and the dishes and scrubbing the floor to squeak it clean and do it, giving him a handy and a footy. And you'll be losing your mind focusing on everything and everyone else except for you. And like I always tell you, the moment you start doing that, guys are going to take a step right over you while you're scrubbing that floor squeaky clean, and then they're going to go chase after the girl who's not paying them any money. You cannot save anyone. If people don't want to change, they will not change, and that's it. It's all up to them. You can give them everything. And guys, I have done this. I have given some like pers people in my life so much. I've given them everything I could on every single level not willing to change, still betrayed me, still did the same thing over and over again. And you know why it happened to me? Because I had to learn this lesson. I had to come to the conclusion that, you know what, Liz? It's not your job to save people. It's your job to save you. And that's... 
Uh, so actually, I would advise that for you as well when you're dealing with men. When you see that they're not treating you how you expect to be treated, you want princess treatment, and you see it's very difficult for him to do that, or he's too shy to do, oh, I'm too shy, I can't ask for your number. I'm too shy, I can't ask you on a date. I'm too shy, I don't I don't really know how to like pursue a woman that I want. I shy, maybe you do that for me. You ask me on the date, you take me out, you buy me dinner. It's ridiculous. Don't waste your time and don't waste a lot of energy trying to turn the shy soy boy who can't ask you out on a date into the man that you're looking for, which is a big dog. And my job, you know what it is in life? Just to thrive and be on my highest level. And whatever is also on my highest level, though, I will attract because I am there. So whatever is also here, I will attract no matter what it is, whether it's job, relationship, friendships, they will all come to me. I just need to vibrate high and just enjoy my life and then it will all come. You know how much energy it takes and how much it drains you to constantly try to save people all, to constantly do things for others. No, it drains you. Honey, we need that energy. We need that for ourselves, okay? So stop trying to save people. They don't want to be saved. People don't want to be saved. You're not God. Leave it to God. Pray for them. Also, do not give unsolicited advice. Like if someone didn't ask you to give advice on their situation, don't give it. Because you'll always be the bad guy and you'll always get the blame for it. So just shush, okay? Shush. Someone that's seductive just can sit back, lay back, and you can observe. Observe their patterns, observe how they are. If they ask you, what do you think about the situation? You can give your honest opinion. But if someone did not ask, if someone just wants to rant to you, just listen. Just listen and protect your energy. Like I said, it's not our problem, honey. We, we have to keep our energy for ourselves. One of the things I want to mention to you is one of the mistakes you can make a lot of times when you're dealing with guys, especially guys who are aloof and guys who aren't showing you what you want to be shown in a relationship, you can start getting in the habit of like telling him everything that he's doing wrong to you. It's a waste of a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of your breath. You only have a limited amount of days on this earth. You don't want to be wasting them telling someone what they're doing wrong when in reality, after you spend all that energy telling him what he's doing wrong, he's only going to defend himself and justify his actions. And that's what majority of guys do when you think, oh, well, if I just tell you how poorly you're treating me, you'll come to this magical realization that it's so wrong and so horrible and you'll want to change because of the goodness of your heart. In reality, the best thing for you to do if you really want to pull men in, be seductive like the wizard Liz uh, is talking about, and also have them want to make changes for you is to sit back, relax, actually withdraw from those men and allow them to come to you with the boom box outside of your house, throwing rocks at your window, asking, please take me back. I'll do absolutely anything for you to take me back. Because then if you say, huh, you know, I was thinking, I only like guys with cars. <gasps> I have a car. I have a car. Don't you know I drive a Chevy Camaro? I have a car. I have a car. I have a car. And they'll be so much more receptive to you and your advice, even if you're not directly giving them advice on how to change or how to treat you. They're going to be so much more receptive when they come to you because they don't like the fact that you've withdrawn from them. Okay. Allow people to help you. This goes back to you do not chase, you attract. How can you attract something if you don't allow people to help you? How can you get to that next level if you don't allow anyone to do anything for you? How are you going to do everything on your own? You know, it's not like you have to be desperate for help or whatever. But when someone says like, hey, listen, like, you know, I can do this for you. Or you know what? I can help you like financially and stuff. No, no, I can't accept because I don't want them to say that like, oh my God, they did this for me. Honey, people do things for you all the time, okay? The bus driver picking you up is literally doing something for you. We are all humans. We're all one. We are here to help each other. If we, if we were all supposed to be like alone and individual, God would not create us together, but he did. You have to receive the help. And that's... This is actually a sticky one because I've noticed this. Um, I've noticed this quite a lot. Sometimes when you, as a man, when we want to help, uh, sometimes... It's hard to help because some women don't want to accept that help. That's fine. Um, but you also have to understand sometimes you don't realize that the universe is trying to give you something at that time through someone else, right? 
And when you push that away or you don't accept that because of some, you know, I don't know, uh, ulterior reason or, you know, you just don't want the helper to feel like someone's helping you or like you owe them something, you're actually pushing away the universe from actually giving you more. And a lot of times you can push away blessings, you can push away all these things that are supposed to be yours because you're of the mindset that no, 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 no one helped me. I'm just going to go through this by myself. So then the universe is like your genie and it grants you exactly that. Okay, I won't give you any magical moments of help. I won't bestow upon you any man who's ready to take care of you and do all these fancy things that you see on Instagram and, uh, you know, on your social media. I'm just going to allow you to go through this by yourself. No help, just like you asked for. People that are willing to accept help, they get the furthest. They get the furthest. Because they're not afraid to say, hey, yeah, listen, you can please like help me. I need help. So like not a flex to be like, oh my God, no, I never accept help. I did everything on my own. Honey, you didn't do anything on your own. Literally everyone helps everyone always. Your boss that gives you a paycheck helped you like literally always. So self-made doesn't exist except help from people. And that's it. Don't try to be like, oh my God, I'm so cool. I'm so tough. No, you're not. Why would you struggle extra when you could have got it in like a shorter cut? Another thing is basic manners. A lot of you don't have like the basic manners and that can maybe be because like your parents never taught you or you just don't know how to act. Teach yourself, <laughs> reparent yourself, teach yourself oh. how to use culturally. Teach yourself how to say thank you when a waiter does something or anyone in the service industry does something. Like when people are walking, holding the door open for them if they're behind you, but also if they're far away, don't hold it open so they have to like run and stuff. No, but if they're like close, then hold I would say this is less about um, being seductive and more about just being a good human. Um, because obviously when men are dating you from their a man's perspective uh, if we see that you treat other people very unkindly it's gonna rub us the wrong way and make us feel like you're probably gonna treat uh, us unkindly as well it doesn't mean you have to you know be the super nicest person ever and let people walk all over you of course you still want to be stern but there's a difference between being stern and demanding your respect and being disrespectful so I think that's pretty straightforward assertive when needed see when you are especially a woman you are gonna see a lot of people in the business industry in relationships in friendships that will try to undermine you that will try to disrespect you so you have to be assertive you have to know when to speak up for your boundaries and when to say hey listen this is where you will not cross me if you let men walk all over you they will do that if you let men disrespect you they will do that if you let men take advantage of you they will gladly do that. You cannot expect the men who are coming to your, into your life looking to do the bare minimum while extracting the most from you. You cannot expect those to be the men trying to protect your well-being and your internal happiness. Those men, if you let them, will suck all of the life force out of your being and soul. They will leave you dry and lifeless and they'll skip on their way after sucking your soul out, not in a good way. And they will go about their day happy as ever. Also become comfortable with your body. A lot of you women don't even dare to go in front of the mirror completely naked and stare at your own body. And that way you will never be confident or seductive because you're just not comfortable with your whole body, which is like literally everything you are. Our head is only this small, like this is the body, okay? <laughs> have to become comfortable with it you can like hug your depending on the size of your head you know your head might be massive that might take up 90 percent of your body but uh yeah i think it's very important that you see whatever shape or size you are it really doesn't matter or color or whatever even if you have a huge bobble head you need to believe in you and if you have problems with you or you don't feel like you know some parts of you are the best then work on that that's perfectly fine we're all a work in progress but at the end of the day you have it has to start the foundation of your seductiveness and your attractiveness is not oh wear a red dress and then the men will all have their eyes bulging out of their sockets no it's believe in you first see the see the sexiness and hotness and seductiveness in you first so whatever needs to be done for you going out spending time on you uh dressing a certain way whatever it may be that makes you feel good about you when you look in the mirror that is the start of your seduction you have so much blessings that god gave you do not waste them use them to your full potential use them to become you 
You don't even have to become the best version of you because that's already who you are. You have to become yourself again. I will make sure that in this lifetime, any blessing that I got, I will use it. Anything. I will accept any help that I got because I know when there's help being sent to me, God has sent it. There, he sent people to me to help you. Here, Liz, here you go. Here's guidance. Look at the signs. Look at the help that you're getting from other people and take it. Because when you leave this earth and God looks at you and says, honey, I gave you this, 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 and you didn't accept, you'll be shamed. Uh, one of the things that can become so demoralizing to us as human beings is, oh my gosh, you know, he doesn't like me. He doesn't want me. He's not taking me serious. What can I do now? What can I do that? And sometimes you're going to lose your mind just trying to control things that you can't control. Unfortunately, I can give you strategies. I can tell you what men want. I can tell you what they're into, which we talk about all the time on our show. And I can tell you all the different things men are attracted to about you and what will make you the most attractive version of yourself. But you also have to understand there's an element to which you can't control. You can't control what's going on in that guy's life. You can't control... Um, everything that he does when he's not with you. You can't control his exes and whether they come in or not in and out of his life. And you just, there's so many things that you can't control. Your focus has to stay narrowed in on you. You know how to present yourself. You know how to carry yourself. Yes, you learn some strategies, but you also understand that I'm only in control of me and I'm perfectly at peace with that. I'll sleep good at night knowing I took care of me, me first, and me last, and then the rest took care of itself.